Carlson Fieldhouse for CTN's live coverage of boys high school basketball. It's a Northwest Suburban Conference and Section 7 for a matchup as the Cardinals host the Centennial Cougars. Joe Young, Howie Shapiro, sidelines, and Howie as we get into the latest part of the schedule possible. You have a matchup between two teams fighting to stay out of the cellar in Section 7. Yeah, very similar teams, very young. Uh, they score relatively close to around the same point. As you mentioned, both fighting to stay out of that cellar. Uh, the, uh, the Cougars beat them earlier in the season. So the Cardinals, I think, are looking for an opportunity for revenge here tonight on their home floor. Well, and as we look at the final four games of the regular season, they really need that win. This is their last game in the section uh, before the tournament. They have a half game lead over Centennial, both the conference and section standings, and they'd like to stay out of that number eight spot if they can and, uh, if they can by any way. Uh, tonight, though, they have to focus on trying to end their seven game losing streak. You mentioned it, two very young teams. Uh, for Coon Rapids, they've had a tumultuous season. That has meant they are asking a lot of guys to do much more than expected on a lot earlier timetable and a lot of guys are are stepping up and trying to find a way to contribute yeah they really are and you know you're going to start with uh taking plum and tate uh, actually we're we're talking about uh ty Bragoon first however we'll get back to uh to uh Ty and plum and tate later Ty Bragoon's the leader on this team. He scores 15 and a half points, averages almost five boards a game. As, as Centennial goes, that's how he goes, that's how Centennial goes. So an opportunity here for the, the Cardinals defensively to keep an eye on him. Yeah, the Cardinals have three guys averaging between 10 and 11 points, uh, but they need more depth. And you mentioned his name, Tegan Plum and Tate. Just a sophomore, has gotten much more varsity playing time than anticipated at the beginning of the season. He's been a little streaky, but when he's hot, he's got an outstanding perimeter shot. Yeah, he can hit from outside the arc, and, and they're going to need that coming off this bench, especially since Jabri Palmer fell on the ice this weekend, broke his hand, he's out for the season. So it's going to put a little more pressure on that young man, because he is a young man, just a sophomore, but an opportunity for him to step up tonight coming off the bench. Well, there will be plenty of his class mates on the floor on both sides and uh, we'll see which team is able to possibly secure the seventh seed in section seven cardinals and the cougars take the floor next on ctn back at the roger e carlson field house just about ready to get this one underway Coon Rapids, as we talked about, uh, just a half game better, a 5-17 and 17 record versus 4-17 and 17 for Centennial, 2-8 and eight in the section versus 1-7. and seven. And the opening tip goes in favor of the Cougars. D'Agostino on the right side. And they'll work the perimeter. Dreisen looking for some room, can't find any. Back up top, Bergoon will swing it to the corner. Back up top comes Hossfeld. Hossfield. Gives it to Perner, who hands it back to Burgoon. And the Cougars being very patient on the opening possession, and then the drive leads to a foul, and Jackson Dryson going to the free throw line for a pair. They're gonna call Jackson Young for the, the foul here. It's gonna look like he reached from behind. Opportunity for Dreesen from the, the stripe to see if they can get the first points of this game. And the scoring starts with a free throw for Jackson Dreer. One of the things for this offense for Centennial, they, they go, they're streaky. So if they shoot the ball well, uh, they have an opportunity in this game, but they've, uh, they've gone through opportunities where they have not shot the ball well. Dreisen two for two, a two nothing lead for Centennial. Freeman into the front court. Jackson Hatward cutting back to his left. That one off the side of the backboard and Centennial quickly to the other end and reestablishing that half court possession. Hatward got a hand in, nearly able to steal it away from Hossfield. Hossfield gets it back. 
Into the corner, D'Agostino for three. That won't fall. Hetler has the rebound. Coach O talked about turnovers. You saw that er early turnover. Hetler for three. That won't fall. The rebound by Perner. Uh, they're going to have to do a good job. 29 turnovers in their loss to Andover. Quick three-pointer off the mark for Dreisen. Battle on the floor. And it's going to be tied up. Possession arrow favoring Coon Rapids. Yeah, good job by the Cardinals is making sure that uh, he couldn't get rid of the basketball and find a teammate. Be able to tie that one up and, uh, and get possession. You saw that uh, early three attempt from the corner that uh, Centennial hurt them, hurt the Cardinals with that uh, opportunity in that first game. Jordan for three. That one's off the back iron. D'Agostino had the rebound momentarily. Knocked away by Hetwer, but it did go off of yeah. D'Agostino. So after a brief discussion, it'll be Coon Rapids basketball. You know, Cardinals, too, they have to hit their shots. You know, they have an opportunity here for a win if they can uh, just be consistent offensively. Jordan turning to his left, can't get it to go off the glass. Rebound controlled by Dyson. Dyson into the front court, left side for D'Agostino, back up top for Dyson. And again, just very patient in the offensive end, Centennial. D'Agostino, an open look for three, it won't fall. Jerry Freeman has the rebound. Oh, you see a couple of early misses from three for the Cougars. Three-pointer for Jackson Young at the other end, in and out, rebound tipped around, on the run is Dreesen. Dreesen drops it in, he's got all four points in the ball game. Did a nice, did a nice job adjusting for his shot. Freeman finds counter Jordan slashing to the lane for two. Yeah, nice job, nice feed inside to Jordan. He missed an earlier one in close, but uh, that time he made sure he capitalized on that nice pass from Freeman. Backdoor feed and Dreisen scoring easily. Just a bit of a breakdown defensively that time for the Cardinals. 6-2 lead early here for Centennial. Three-pointer for Hetwer is good. Oh, he buried that one. Jackson had 17 points against Centennial in that loss earlier in the season. Bergoon drives and gets it to go. First shot attempt, first basket for Centennial's leading scorer. Jerry Freeman leading the Cardinals in scoring with 11 points per game. Shot off the mark for Young. Belpedio with the rebound, but taken away by Dreesen. All alone, Freeman out of nowhere. Swats that one away. When Dreesen thought he was going up uncontested, Jackson Young said, or sorry, Jerry Freeman said, not so fast. No, he did a nice job. He's got that speed coming back defensively and was able to get a hand on it without fouling. Jump shot won't go for Dreesen. Cardinals back on the attack. Jackson Young up top for Hepworth, left side. Belpedio for three, it's good. Uh, we're tied at eight, and again, just nice ball movement. And Jackson Network being, uh, finding Belpedio open in the corner, made sure he got him the ball. Three-point answer at the other end, and Centennial right back in front. That was Burgoon, again, we, you talked about hit their leading score, he's so dangerous. Drive for Freeman, off the mark, battle for the rebound, D'Agostino comes away with it. Bergoon into the corner. Three-pointer for Hosfield won't go. Long rebound, Belpedio. Cardinals turn it up the tempo. That pass a little behind Jackson Young, but he's able to recover for it. Drives, gets the foul, and will go to line to shoot two. Jacob Hosfield picking up his first. Yeah, they would uh, love to get uh, Jackson Young involved here early offensively. Looking for his first points of the game. Yeah. 
Young able to rattle that one around and down. His first point of the night. Tyler Mabry checking in for the first time. I see for Christmas he was gifted the Shapiro starter stash. Yes, absolutely. You get that at any local party city. It's, it's a popular gift it item is. at the holidays. Second one is off the mark for Jackson Young. A two-point lead for Centennial as the Cougars bring it down court. Into the corner for Mabry. Brings it back up top for Goon. Thought about handing it off. Instead, Mabry and Burgoon play a little catch. Burgoon drives, kicks it out. Mabry for three, it's good. Nice job, you got the defense is gonna collapse in when Burgoon drives the lane. Well, and he had a, a hand in his he face did. and still able to knock it down. A turnover again by the Cardinals. Long three-pointer for Dreesen won't fall. Rebound for Jerry Freeman. Cardinals quick in transition. Looking underneath for Connor Jordan, able to battle and get it back. Win it to Young. Finds Belpedio in the right corner. This time it won't go. D'Agostino has the rebound for Centennial. Yeah, good thought there. Unfortunately, Belpedio couldn't drop it. Dreesen works back up top. Three-pointer is good. 17-9 lead now for the Cougars here. Three three-point baskets over the last couple of minutes has helped. Hetwer looking to answer at the other end. It comes up short. D'Agostino has the rebound. Dreesen with nine points for the Cougars. Looking for another three. He's got it. Oh, he's hot. He's got a dozen in timeout, Coon Rapids. Yeah, all of a sudden, it's a 20-9 to nine lead for the Cougars. And Coach O has seen enough, and he decides he's going to talk to the guys. Well, they've scored, outscored the Cardinals 12-1 to one over the last uh, about three and a half minutes. Four three-pointers. There's head coach Spencer Waldvogel. He said, you know, it's been a learning process for his team as well. They're, they're very young. They, very they young. start three sophomores. Just two seniors on the Centennial roster, none for Coon Rapids. You talk about, uh, you know, Jackson Young, just a sophomore, clearly one of the uh, Coon Rapids leaders. And uh, we talked about Tegan Plum and Tate, just yep. a sophomore. Uh, and then pretty much the rest of, of the contributing Cardinals are all juniors, so. Both squads with a lot back next year. Connor Jordan scoring in the post. Oh, that, you know, that they needed that bucket off the timeout. Again, just work that ball underneath to Jordan. He's able to get the soft, uh, easy look. Three-pointer for Burgoon is good. Well, he's got a shooter's touch, doesn't he? Nothing but net. Off the dribble, too. Jackson Young driving, kicks out Jackson Hetwer for three. It's short. Rebound chased down by Belpino. Great pass to get it to Young. He gets the foul and will go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, good hustle. Just, just a nice job to find, get that rebound and find Young underneath. He's going to earn his, try and earn his points from the stripe. Again, just a great job by Belpino to get it to him. Perner called for the foul, his first. <laughs> Taking Plum and Tate into the contest for the first time and Jackson Hetworth getting a breather. I would expect to see him back on the floor relatively yeah, I, quickly. I would think so. Young misses them both. Rebound by Dreesen and Centennial right back into that half court offense. Three pointer for Mabry won't fall this time. Freeman tracks down the rebound, sprints to the other end. Plowman Tate is going to drive baseline and score. Yeah, just a nice, nice move to the inside by Plowman Tate. And again, he uses his size to get to the hoop. 
Bergoon picked up by Jordan, hands it off for Dreesen. Couple of fakes, puts it on the floor, draws a foul. And we'll try again. That's going to be on Connor Jordan. That'll be his first team second. Hosfeld back in. Timmy Ball getting his first minutes for Centennial. Drive by Ball comes up short. Rebound out of bounds to the Cardinals. Papa Tate fighting for that rebound inside. 10 point lead for the Cougars. Freeman working to the left side, hands it off. Jackson Young, long three. Lots of arc, but hit the front of the rim. Rebound by Palm and Tate. Get it into the post, kicked out. Belpedio for three, that's in and out. Rebound controlled by Mabry and handed off to Luke Gunderman. Gunderman works left side, ball punched away by, by Jerry Freeman. And then uh, some pressure forces the turnover. Coach Wald Vogel thought there should have been a foul. Yep. And we'll explain his side to the ref as he goes by. Of course, the ref's just, uh, he'll may, he may listen, but he's certainly not going to change anything. Good feed, a little too much speed for Plowman Tate. Put it o over the rim. Yeah, it's a tough one to miss. And again, you know, just that explosion to the rim. He's got that good first step. Well, he's long. He's got a lot of growing to do, obviously. Good strip by Freeman. Freeman drives right at the defense. Shot comes up short. Rebound and follow is good for Jerry Freeman. Yeah, nice job by Jerry just to stay with that miss. Able to get his own, own miss, get the rebound, and put in the bucket. Osfield gets it back for Gunderman. Bergoon, a couple of pump fakes. Hands it off to Mabry. Cardinals, since that time out, have stepped up on defense. And as I say that, Bergoon does find yeah. enough room to fire another three, but this one in and out. Belpedio driving baseline. His pass deflected and out of bounds. Jeremy Adi and Jackson Hetwer and Kenny Jones all checking in for the Cardinals. You know, Kenny Jones is another one of those players when, when he's on, he can he can uh, fire it up from outside. Well, it, he's I know it's a scary pass from Hetwer, but Jones recovers, his shot won't fall. He's much like uh, what we saw from Japri Palmer in that yeah. last Sinoka game uh, that we covered. Just really impressed with Kenny in a couple of games we saw earlier in the season. Just his tenacity and hustle. And a lot of times that can be the difference. Bergoon kicks it out to the corner. The three-pointer is good for Hosfield. Yeah, they've they've uh, been they've been good from outside the arc tonight so far. Have the Cougars in this first half. They're going to call them for a travel. Their last 18 points all scored from beyond the arc. Outscoring the Cardinals 18 to 7 during that stretch, and that accounts for their 11-point lead. Three-pointer for Bergoon will not go. Rebound by Young. Adi will run the floor, push it to Howard. Into the post, Jones back out to Adi. Will bring it up top. Plowman Tate stops and pops. Shot won't drop. Howard got the rebound to Jones.
Young left alone, takes the three, rattles out. And the rebound secured for by Hosfield for Centennial. Young's had some nice looks. He's just unfortunately right now can't get him to fall. He's witnessed by that last attempt as it rattled in and out. Burgoon working in the post, draws a foul, will go to the line to shoot two. Donati. Burgoon hits one and two. It's a 12 point lead, good rebound by Kenny Jones. Young drives and is called for the offensive foul. That's his second, team fourth. Just under seven minutes remaining in the opening half. Centennial a 27-15 lead. Dreesen gets it back to Burgoon. Dreesen from way downtown, and that's well short. The rebound controlled by Hosfield. Back out, Burgoon will leave it back again for Dreesen. Puts it on the floor. Fade away from the left baseline is good. Yeah, just a nice move to create some space for himself and just a little, as you mentioned, a little fadeaway. Got the roll, but in. Three-pointer for Hatwer won't fall. Dreesen has, or excuse me, that's Hosfield with the rebound. In the first meeting, Centennial did most of its damage in the first half. There's another three-pointer for Dreesen. They had a big lead, they, they played nearly even. I think Coon Rapids may have even won the second half by a point. It was like 32-31 in the second half, but I think they had like a 15 point lead at the break, if I'm not mistaken. 41-26, 41-27. Yep, and you're right, there was 32-31 the Centennial in that second half. Uh, you know, Coach Coach O said we played better in the second half, obviously, than we did in the first, but putting up 41 really hurt them. Well, and that has been a, a struggle for the Cardinals all season long, you know, is the, the defense yep. giving up. I think uh, right now they're a little better than 81 points per game allowed. They've given up triple digits three times. Jerry Freeman drives to the lane, gets contact, and will go to the line to shoot two. Thought he might have gotten a reach in on his way yeah. in, but uh, able to stick with it. It's called uh, Maybe follow. Maybe he just lost the handle. Yeah. Andreessen, that's his first team fourth. Freeman just, again, does a nice job of getting inside and get that chance. Freeman able to hit them both. D'Agostino wide open in the corner, knocks down another three-pointer. And Coach O not happy as he calls another timeout. Well, he talked about you know the three-point opportunities hurt them in that first matchup. They're certainly hurting them here in the second in the uh, in the second matchup. Trying to light a fire under his team with 5.34 to play in the first half. And on the other side, Coach Waldvogel has to be pretty happy with how his team yeah. has performed, especially uh, their perimeter shooting in this first half. Eight three-pointers now in the contest for Centennial, just one for Coon Rapids, and they were the first to hit from beyond the arc. Well, and, and this first half is uh, setting up very similar similar to the first half of that first matchup. Although, you know, we've still got plenty of time left. 
Centennial may may score more than the 41 they did in that opening half in the, in the first matchup. Well, and the Cardinals just hoping they can trim back into this yes. lead. We've talked over a number of years in a number of different programs, really, about when you're a team that, that struggles somewhat on offense, you can't afford to get into big holes early. And that is definitely the case with this Cardinals squad, just not a team that, that is going to go on, on deep runs and uh, be able to dig out of large holes. Freeman can't get it to go on the baseline. Good save by Jordan. Got it over to Belpedio. Back down to Jordan outside Freeman. Little pump fake. Trying to find a little bit of room. Good defense from D'Agostino. Jones will give it back up to Freeman. Freeman for three. It's good. And that was a desperately needed basket for Grand Rapids. Hugely needed basket, especially off that timeout. Over and back. And any turnover is a good turnover at this point for the Cardinals. Well, they just have to make sure they, they make them pay for that turnover. But you are correct. Down 15, under five minutes to go. First half, Belpedio gets it to Jordan, right side. Hands off to Freeman alone in the lane, but the little floater won't fall. Rebound not controlled by Perner. He lost it out of bounds, and Coon Rapids will get another chance. Belpedio inbounds to Jordan underneath. Jones. Blocked, got it back, blocked again. Tracks it down in the corner, his pass taken away. Perner will slow things down for Centennial. Yeah, another Cardinal turnover, obviously. It doesn't please Coach O. Burgoon tried a little shovel pass underneath to Hossfield, and Plum and Tate came up with the steal. Connor Jordan driving, kicks out. Jones for three, that's off the mark, Burgoon. Pushes it up court quickly. Centennial being patient. Another open look for three. Another one good for Jackson Dreesen. He's got 20 points in the first half. Yeah, he's uh, he's played really, really well here this evening in this first half. He had 13. Plum and, Plum and Tate's three-pointer is short, and Jones going to be called for the foul as he went over the back on Burgoon. He had 13 points in that first matchup, already 20 here in the first half. So that's Kenny Jones first, team fifth. He has four of the teams now, nine three-pointers in this first half. Well, Coach uh, Waldvogel wanted his team to shoot the ball well here tonight, and they certainly have. Dreesen gonna be called for the offense. A little forearm shiver on Freeman. He lost his footing at the same time. And that's his second. Gunderman and Mabry back in for Centennial. Jackson Dreesen getting a well-deserved break. Freeman driving left side and gets it to go. Yeah, nice, nice to get nice control, nice to get the ball in that uh, in that left hand. Ball tracks it down near midcourt. And oh. he double dribbled. Pressure from it. Connor Jordan forces another centennial turnover. Jordan takes a look, finds a lane, comes up empty for Goon. That's unfortunate, he made a nice fake to get to the, get to the hoop. Burgoon will take the three and he's got another one. He's got a dozen. And they're at that 41. Freeman comes right back down and scores underneath. Freeman has 11, he's right at his average. 
Burgoon kicks it out. Mabry for three. This one won't fall. Connor Jordan is going to have the rebound, and, and the foul is going to go against Timmy Ball. I love that he argued that. <laughs> It was, it was one of the most clear holding yeah. calls I've ever seen. Uh, I like it. You got You always have hey, to plead. You never know. Plead your innocence. Freeman driving left side gets contact as he got Gunderman turned around and Freeman will go to line to shoot two. Cardinals will be in the bonus the rest of this first half. Only two and a half minutes to go as they try to dig out of this hole. And at this point, uh, as we talked about, 41-27 at the half. Yeah. First time these two teams met. For this last 233, Cardinals need some stops. And then success, success, successful, easy for me to say, Transition. Ball kicks it back out. Three pointer well off the mark that time for Haasfield. Freeman getting Gunderman turned around again. Tried to drop it off for Connor Jordan in traffic. Trying to find some room, put a shot up, but it won't fall. Haasfield on the run the other way. Kicks it out. Burgoon, three. Good. He's deadly from out there. They have been raining threes yeah. all night. Oh, beautiful Jordan pass. Jordan all alone underneath. What a dime from Freeman. Jordan has six. I agree with your assessment of the pass, and I think Jerry Freeman has really looked pretty good uh, through the first half, but uh, unfortunately, so far behind just need a lot more than one guy getting in rhythm. Burgoon inbounds to Mabry, quick up for the basket. Young driving baseline, lost the handle out of bounds. Ball under pressure, coughed it up, but it's going to end up getting position well enough that it ends up out of bounds off the Cardinals. Postfield up top, Burgoon for three. This time it won't fall. Jackson Young trying to elude the entire team. Finds room for three, it won't fall. Connor Jordan tipped it, but right to Timmy Ball. Gunderman to Hostfield up front. Tried to drop it off to Burgoon in the lane. Loose ball on the floor. Timmy Ball getting possession. They're all tied up. And Centennial will keep it as we're under a minute to go in the first half. Good hustle on the floor by the Cougars to just maintain that uh, opportunity. Cardinals do force the tie up, but Centennial will remain with the basketball. Foul going to be called away from the ball. Going to go against Anthony Belpedio. Yep. A little hand fighting. Probably his first, team seventh. Probably not the guy you want on the line, although I think he did miss one of his attempts. Uh, I'm not sure that he did. I thought he missed the back end of one of his free throws. Oh, you're up. right. There you go. You I jinxed him. <laughs> Three pointer for Young. Long rebound. Great. Jump for Jerry Freeman. Oh. 
bucket and the foul. Yeah, Freeman definitely he has is not hops. going down without no, a fight. No, and he has some hops. He has 15 points here in the first half for the Cardinals. Yeah, he went way up yeah. for the rebound and then takes it right at three guys. Yeah, right between them. Gets the bucket and the foul. Still a 16 point lead with under 30 seconds to play and that's gonna be kind of Jordan. You can jam the receiver at the line in football. Not in basketball. It's not allowed in basketball. No. You don't get that that five yard to really no, no just. Uh, you, get, you don't get a cushion, five foot cushion. Berguna one and one, misses the front end. Belpedio the rebound. Freeman hands off to Jones, back to the right. Tried to drop it off for Jordan, intercepted by Ball. Mabry, the ball in the high post. Under 10 seconds to go and five. Ball from way outside, that's well off the mark. Rebound tipped out, Bergoon throws it up wow. and gets it off the glass as the buzzer sounds. Wow. And uh, that's having the touch and having things going. And Centennial will go to the locker room up 49 to 31. We will take a break. Have first half reaction right after this. You're watching Boys Basketball Live on CTF. Rodrigue Carlson Fieldhouse Centennial up 49-31. As we reach the half, we're joined by Cardinal head coach Mike Gorick. And, and coach, you knew coming in their three-pointers could be deadly. What do you do to try and rebound and keep them from continuing? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we've you know we've we've done some things. You know, they're getting some good looks and. Um, God, they've hit some tough ones too. That's, I mean, God, I can think of at least three where we've come out, we got a hand in the face, and they're still knocking it in. Um, and, you know, that's, that's just tough. They're hitting the hell out of it right now. We've got to disrupt them. So we've tried to do some things to disrupt them. But, you know, we've got to be disciplined behind the disruption. And uh, that's going to be key. We're going to have to speed them up. We're going to have to get them out of, like, their comfort zone. That's going to be the key. You know, Coach, we just, I'm just looking through the keys you and I had talked about. And, and really, you know, unfortunately, you haven't been able to get to the ones that you wanted. But turnovers, uh, I think, in that first half, uh, probably too many for your liking, yeah, for your squad. No, for sure. Like, we have just have some... I don't know, man. we got to be threats with the ball and look at the rim. There's, up, you know, things there where we're just jumping in the air and throwing it in the four guys. And that's just un... You know, it's not what we preach. We've talked a lot about taking care of the ball. We emphasize that kind of stuff every day, the decision-making things and advantage and disadvantage. And, you know, right now I think we're pressing some of us, and, you know, we just got to figure out the combination of guys that's going to take care of the ball. And, you know, dang, I also think it's frustrating too because we've had some moments where we've moved the ball really well and caught some good looks. We just haven't hit some of these looks. Even, you know, some of them at the rim and, you turn around and they knock a three right in your face with a hand up, and that's tough. And so we got to get in there. We got to knock them out of rhythm, and we got to get some buckets, plain and simple. We may need a little bit of lady luck here to get back in this, but first half, first half sucked, so we need the second <laughs> one to be better. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks. We will take another break. Be back with first half highlights after this. You're watching Boys Basketball Live on CTS.
Back at the field house, Centennial up by a bunch. Thanks to hot outside shooting, 11 three-pointers in the first half for Centennial. Uh, and they've led pretty much from the very start. Oh yeah, putting in 49 points in that first half is huge. Yeah, Coon Rapids came back to tie it early at eight all. Since then, it's been all Centennial. We're showing all these uh, drives to the basket, but it was the outside <laughs> yeah. shooting, just unbelievable. 11 three-pointers in the first half for uh, Centennial. Coon Rapids did, was able to hit a couple of their own, uh, but uh, just too, too little uh, to try and, and compete against a team that's knocking down threes the way Centennial is. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry Freeman had a great first great half. Great first half, 16 but, points. But how, And that's key uh, for the Cardinals, I think, moving forward is try to get some of his teammates to feed off of that yes. energy and get into that same uh, rhythm that he had through the first 18 minutes. Totally agree. Still plenty of basketball to be played. Take a break. Be back with more from the Fieldhouse after this on CTN. at the field house centennial up 49 31 at the half over coon rapids we're joined now by cougar head coach spencer waldvogel and and coach uh got to be a pretty easy uh discussion after that first half in the locker room uh yeah we just told the guys to keep doing what they're doing uh we just you know we said shot we may not shoot as well the second half we got to find ways to score uh, we got to keep holding Coon Rapids to one possessions and uh, keep rebounding the ball very well. Coach, that first key you talked about with me is shoot the ball well, and, and 11, I believe it was 11 threes in that first half for you guys. You know, you, it's just the momentum. Just talk to your guys about what, what they do to keep it up. Yeah, I mean, we're a shooting team. We've got, you know, at any time on the floor tonight, we've had, we can have five pretty good shooters on the floor, so I just told the guys keep shooting. Um, you know, sometimes it won't fall, but you don't get out of a streak. You don't get out of a uh, slump unless you keep shooting. So. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Good luck the rest of the way. We will take one more break, and we will be back for the second half right after this. You're watching Live Boys High School Basketball on CTA. know the who, what, when, and where of Coon Rapids? Then follow CTN on social media. It's that simple. Whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, keep up with local news, sports, and events. And the people who make our community such a great place to live. So give us a follow, like, share, or subscribe, and always be the first to know what's up in Coon Rapids. That's CTN, helping you stay connected.
at the Roger E. Carlson Fieldhouse. Coon Rapids not feeling at home too much, trailing Centennial by 18. And as we talked about at the Open, you know, this is a critical game late in the season for section standings. Coon Rapids came in with a half game lead over the Cougars. So a couple of strong defensive plays from the Cougars to deny the Cardinals a point on the opening possession. And kicked away out of bounds by Jerry Freeman. Yeah, we'll see what kind of changes that uh, Coach O talked to his guys about in the uh, halftime break. Well, I think you want to try and slow, if not stop, yeah. numbers 2 and 21. Yeah, I would think so. 38 like else. of the 49 points coming from the combo of Dreesen and Burgoo. Yeah, it definitely makes, try to make somebody else beat you. Dreesen from about 21 wow. is good. He's, he's feeling it tonight. That's what the Cardinals did not want to see is to come out them and then come out and hit a three. Hatworth from way downtown looking to answer, but coming up empty, the rebound by Perner. Dreesen's gonna stop and try and hit another wow. one, and he does nothing but that. Quick timeout for Coon Rapids here. It's first six points of this uh, second half scored by the Cougars to increase their lead. One well, again, trying to get those two guys out of their rhythm now, 26 points for Jackson Dreesen. I'm not sure if that's a season high for him, but it's gonna be probably pretty gotta close. Gotta be pretty, pretty close. Came in averaging 9.3 a game. Man trying to pump the crowd up. Floor hasn't given him much to cheer about yet. And uh, again, you know, just. I, I don't know that a, a number one versus a number two seed in the section makes a lot of difference as far as the caliber of opponent you will see in the second or in the uh, quarterfinal round. However, you always like to be seven as opposed to eight. Absolutely. You'd rather not be the lowest seed Co and correct. have to see the number one seed in the opening round. Freeman driving right side, shot comes up short, got his own rebound and put it back. Well, we've seen that a couple of times from Jerry Freeman tonight, just a hustle uh, off, the, off his own miss to get his rebound and then get the bucket. Dreesen trying to Slip it underneath to Perner is out of his reach and a turnover back to the Cardinals. Howard trying to battle his way down low against Hosfield. Gives it up to Connor Jordan, spins to his left, shot comes up short. Perner couldn't control the rebound. Belpedio has it, out to Hetworth. Back out, Belpedio for three from the corner is short. Connor Jordan right there to put it back in. Yeah, Connor Jordan in the per right place at the right time. Ball came right to him. He's got eight. 20 point lead for the Cougars. And then a breakdown. Perner down. all alone underneath. And he put too much on it, Jackson Young. Takes the rebound back the other way. Spins to the paint, needs some help. Kicks it up top for Jackson Hetworth. Connor Jordan working against Perner down low. Hands off to Freeman. He gets the foul and will go to the line to shoot two. Ty Burgoon picking up his second. Mabry checks back in. Freeman has 20 points for the Cardinals. 
uh, he's definitely had a nice contest. Now we're seeing a little more defensive pressure from Coon Rapids, but Centennial able to break it. Three pointer is wow. good for Mabry. Well, Coach uh, Wildvogel said we're a shooting team, and they certainly have proven that tonight. Young drives inside, can't get it to go. Rebound came to Hossfield. Andreessen trying to slip one underneath, and Cardinals come up with the steal, an athletic basket at the other end for Jerry Freeman. Yeah, Jerry Freeman is just playing so well. Right back at it is Jerry Freeman, high off the glass. Jordan tips the rebound to himself. Belpedio for three, that won't fall. Hossfield has the rebound for Centennial. Burgoon will bring it across midcourt. And you see three white jerseys on that far side defensively for that rebound. Bagastino had it punched away. Jackson Young running the floor. Shot won't fall and a foul underneath. Counter Jordan. Another look at the basket by Jerry Freeman. Yeah, he's not afraid to go up against those bigger guys and take it to the hole. Jeremy Adi checks in for the Cardinals. Long three-pointer wow. again for Treason and it's good. He's conscious from outside the arc. He's got three more three-pointers in the second half. Four for the team. Freeman has the answer this time. He has 25. Yeah, it's just about you get yourself in a hole. It's so tough to dig out. Dreesen, this time, the long distance call is left unanswered. That word from way downtown. Long rebound for Freeman. That shot won't go. The rebound controlled by Burgoon. D'Agostino waits for traffic. Shot won't fall. The rebound by Young. Jeremy Adi up top. Freeman a couple of fakes. Puts it on the floor. Tried to go underneath. And Hossfield's going to be called for the reach. That's his second, team second, here in the, se in the second half. Plum and Tate back in the contest for uh, Coon Rapids. They trail by 19 still early in the second half. Inbound goes to Hatwer along the baseline, battling against Mabry, finds room. The shot rolls across the top. Andreessen will bring it up court. Well, Hatwer created a nice opportunity for himself, just could not get it to fall. Hossfield takes a hack and will go to the line to shoot two. So that's Hetworth's first, team second. Osfield able to roll the second one home and push it back to a 20 point lead. Young working against Dreesen in the corner. Nice look for Hatward driving. Shot won't fall. Rebound tipped to Dreesen, and Centennial quickly gets it to the other end. Dreesen will drive this time. Comes up short, but he got the foul. And that's going to be again against Connor Jordan. That's his fourth. That'll be his fourth. No. If he wanted to, could he just back up and shoot from beyond the arc? Yeah, he's, he's, 
much more efficient from there. Well, that's the range he's found yeah. himself. He needs to back up to about 20 or 21 feet because uh, he's been hitting the, the last couple he's hit in this second half have been well outside the arc. He is able to find the range for the second one. 30 yeah. points in the game. Yeah, and there's still plenty of time left in this second half. Plowman Tate, a 15-footer, and he gets the roll. Plowman Tate has four. Burgoon driving, shot comes up short. Rebound, Hatworth pushes it ahead for Belpedio. Belpedio is fouled. The bucket will count. He'll go to the line and try and complete the three-point play. That'll be number three on Dreesen. Uh, just a nice job to get around Dreesen, able to get a shot off, take the contact, and still be able to get the shot to fall. Well, I don't get any cleaner than that. As Belpedio completes that three-point play. Ball kicks it to the corner. Mabry for three. That's off the mark. Long rebound to Gunderman. Gunderman can't find room around Adi. Across for Mabry. Mabry will drive it to the paint, get the bucket, and the foul on Hetworth. Yeah, maybe a nice first step to get to the inside. And uh, there you can see Hetwer. Got a little past Hetwer. Hetwer tried to make up for that. Picked up the foul. And Mabry able to get the roll. Plowman Tate, quick three-point opportunity at the other end. Off the mark, Burgoon. And the long pass disrupted by the Cardinals. Freeman to Plowman Tate, driving baseline, and he stepped on the line and turns it over. Coach Waldvogel did not like that turnover. No. Not the kind of pass they were looking for out of the backcourt. Burgoon drives and then his pass took Perner by surprise. Ball goes up with it. Had it swatted away out of bounds. And Centennial will keep it. Down low gets the foul and will go to line to shoot two. If that was Jones or Freeman, it's going to be Freeman. It is Freeman, yeah. So his second, fifth team foul on the Cardinals. But uh, the important thing is that shooting foul puts him at the line. Burgoon hits them both. He's got 20 in the game. Adi looking to direct traffic. Gets it across for Jerry Freeman. Freeman finds some room. Great dish underneath to Kenny Jones yeah. for the finish. Jerry, Jer Jerry Freeman's been doing it all here this evening for Coon Rapids whether it's from scoring or, or with the, with those beautiful passing for assists. Burgoon finds his way to the lane, but rolls it off the rim. Freeman pushes it ahead. Belpedio blocked but fouled, and will go to the line to shoot two. We talked about Burgoon with 20 points. Only had seven in that first matchup. I mean, good. Look at the dime from Jerry here, just the dish inside. That's how you Kenny do it. Jones. Draw, yep. draw the defense yep. and leave it off for Kenny Jones, just all alone underneath. I got it. 
Well, we talked about it in the first half. They, the first meeting got into a big hole yep. in the first half and then just pretty much traded baskets with Centennial in the second half. And that's about what has happened through the first seven and a half minutes of the second half. Three-pointer off the mark for Gunderman. But clearly when you're down by 18 at the half, you can't afford to trade baskets. No. Freeman for three, this won't go. Jones has the rebound and he's fouled from behind by Mabry. That's his first team fifth. to go, second half. Inbound goes to Plowman Tate on the baseline, back up top, Belpedia. Spins to his left, nearly that ripped away, forced the shot up, it won't go. Burgoon has the rebound, and will slow things down for the Cougars. Ball finds a lane to the rim, won't get it to go, and relatively late whistle on the foul against Kenny Jones. Yeah, it's Kenny's uh, second personal, team sixth. That puts the ball at the line. Ball's first is short as Jackson Young checks back in. Just two points in the game for Jackson Young. Sorry, one point in the game for Jackson Young. Timmy Ball able to hit the second, 69 to 51. So 20 points apiece in the second half leave right where it was as we talked about Cardinals need some stops Freeman drives baseline gets contact will go to line issue two well very again very similar in that first matchup Centennial with a big lead and at the break and, and then pretty evenly played second half for both teams hits them both up to 27 in the game so a little more than 50 percent of the Cardinals scoring good ball movement from the Cougars Dreesen an open wow. look and another three-pointer got 33 Belpedio looking for some help, gets it to Freeman, cutting through the paint. He scores again. Yeah, again, just a nice little find. With that great body control, Jerry's able to make sure. Had enough hang time to get the shot. Midway through the second half, Centennial up comfortably by 17. Goon drives, kicks it to the corner. D'Agostino into the post. Back up top, Dries with a little pump fake, goes to the free throw line and hits that jumper instead. Yeah, pretty much everything he's putting up for is going in. Belpedio follows his own miss and puts it home. A good hustle by Belpedio just to realize that, you know, I think that shot got tipped a little bit. He followed it, followed it and able to get the rebound and the points. Two, 
Call that on Freeman. That's his third. Team eighth. I'm sorry, team seven. So Burkoon at the line is shoot a one and one. Missed the front end. Hosfield comes down with the rebound. Dreesen, a three from the left wow. side is good. He is just unconscious. He's got 38 points. And he cannot miss. Well, he can. We've seen it a couple well, of times. Well, yeah, but in general. Not much. No. But a couple. Dreesen picking up his fourth foul, though. Jackson Young at the line for a one and one. Young hits them both. Dreesen comes out with those four personals and, and those 38 points. Timeout Centennial just in time as Burgoon was about to be tied up by Jerry Freeman who never gives up on no. the play. He was knocked to the ground, still fighting for control. He's been a lot of fun to watch tonight. Oh, absolutely. And we've, we've talked about that earlier in the season. Uh, you know, when he finds rhythm and and uh, is able to, to get going, he can be a, a very dangerous player for the Cardinals. Unfortunately, they just have not been able to get anybody else into any kind of scoring rhythm all game long. So he has 29. Belpedio does have 10. Centennial with the 18-point lead and the ball. Pass taken away by Connor Jordan. Young up court, Adi for three, it's good. His, his first points of the game, big ones, three-pointer. Cuts the lead to 15. Bergoon ran into Jordan, coughed it up. Freeman on the run, has help with him, hangs and scores. Cardinal Faithful trying to uh, bring some noise and help there too. Wow, what a play by yeah. Jerry Freeman. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> He's had a couple of really impressive he re he really has. plays, but uh, you know the one before where he came out of nowhere. I think it was Dreesen was it was Dreesen or Hosfield early in the game, going up on what they thought was a breakaway, and he came from behind to knock it away out of bounds. That one kind of same thing came out of nowhere and just swatted it away. Burgoon steps back for three and he hits it. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's not just Dreesen here tonight. Burgoon's having a, a really nice night as well. 23 points so far in the evening. Seven three pointers in this second half for the Centennial Cougars, 11 in the first half. As Jackson Young able to battle for a couple in the low post. D'Agostino will bring it back up top. Jordan extends on defense. D'Agostino driving, kicks it out. They work the right side. Centennial not going to be in any kind of hurry to shoot the ball. Oh, there's no reason to. 
They're happy taking time off the clock. D'Agostino drives and scores. Down court, Freeman had to try and hustle for it. Still loose, scooped up by Mabry, and Centennial controls. And again, we'll see him just try and, and uh, bleed this clock. Stops with 5.03 on the foul. Jackson Young picking up his third. to rattle home as well. Back to an 18-point lead. Connor Jordan in the post turns. Can't get the shot to go. Got his own rebound, but lost it out of bounds. Felt like he had contact, but won't get the foul. Dreesen's going to yep. come back in. They're not... I want to get, see if he can get the 40. Comes back in with those four personals. Burgoon drops it off. Mabry back to Burgoon, long three-pointer. This one won't go. Connor Jordan has the rebound for the Cardinals. Freeman hands off to Jackson Young on the run. Back up top, Connor Jordan for three. That won't go. Burgoon had the rebound, knocked away. Out of bounds. It'll be Cardinal ball last. And we're, it's knocked away and went off of his leg, out of bounds. Timeout, Coon Rapids. Cardinals call this timeout with 421 remaining here in the second half, trailing 84 66. Reds in the house. There's Red. He hasn't had much to cheer about no, tonight no. either. But he doesn't uh, he doesn't miss a game, home game for sure. Both teams of course in the bonus situation. And for the Cougars, as we talked with Coach Waldvogel at the uh, at the break, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. That's exactly what well, they've done. They absolutely have. Is, uh, they've gotten a lot of open looks for their top guys uh, from the perimeter, and they have knocked those down a combined 63 points between, yeah, between the two of Burkun them. and Crazy. Dreesen. And they now have Mabry in double digits as well. So you add, add him and they're at 74 points for those three guys. Young looking for help. Drops it off for Freeman. He went back to counter Jordan who gets it to go. Another assist for Jerry Freeman. Connor Jordan with 10. Mabry turns and shoots the three. It's short, saved by Jordan. Adi on the run, kicks it out. Jordan uh, Young had a little trouble on the reception. Freeman for three from the corner, that won't go. Young tried to tip it back, wouldn't fall. Rebound loose. <laughs> and a scramble on the floor off of Centennial. Yep. Osfield back in for Centennial. Connor Jordan with a nice little drive and scoop. And again, it's 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 the big holes that you dig yourself in in that first half for the Cardinals. 
You know, they played much better here in the second, but. Mabry gets the follow at the other end. To the post, Jackson Young gets around Dreesen. Shot wouldn't go, tips the rebound to Jordan. Left-handed roll won't go, and this knocked out off of the hands of Belpedio. Couple of misses in tight for the Cardinals. Under three minutes to go, Jackson Howard checks back in for Coon Rapids. Jordan gets a hand in the passing lane, gets the steal. Will take it all the way to the other end for the score. He's now he's now with 14 points, including the last six for the yep. Cardinals. Dreesen gets around Belpedio, gets the foul on Young, and will go to line and shoot two. That'll be number four against Jackson Young. That Cardinals defense so used to uh, having him shoot from the outside did a nice job to move to the basket. See if he can earn a couple of more points from the stripe. got 40 in the game. And a steal at the other end. Quickly down court, Dreesen drives and scores. Again, just adding to his total. That leads back to 18. Young tried to lay it up behind himself. It wouldn't go. Numbers at the other end, D'Agostino for three. Long rebound, controlled by Bergoon. Dreesen moves to the corner for three, that won't fall. Kenny Jones up with the loose ball, gets it to Young, and Young gets the foul on Bergoon. That'll be his third. And it'll be two shots for Jackson Young. Young just, just with five points below his average of uh, a little over 10. It's been that kind of night for the Cardinals. What? Yeah, if they, if they could have found a way to get more than just Jerry Freeman yeah. into a rhythm, especially in that first half. Yeah, things might be different. But uh, Jerry Freeman's had an outstanding game for the Cardinals, 31 points. He's had a couple of blocks, handful of very impressive assists. And he's got who knows how many rebounds as well. So, I mean, he's been all over the floor. All over. Um, had a great night, but again, nobody else able to get any kind of rhythm. You mentioned Jackson Young with uh, now just six points. Jackson Hepburn just three. Yeah, both those guys averaging over 10. And on the flip side, I, I think Jackson Dreesen, you could say he's uh, he's career found night. some rhythm. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's a career night. I, I tried to look it up. I couldn't find individual games broken down by points. but 42 points in the game, 25 in the contest for Ty Burgoon. Jerry Freeman got in there and tied up Dreesen. The Cougars will keep it. But that wins the possession arrow back in favor of the home team. Hopes are slim, but they are still there. The Cardinals pressure full court. Burgoon gets it back to Dreesen across the timeline. 
crosses over, thought about the thought shot, about had it. it knocked away, got it back, and got a foul. It's going to go against Jackson Young. It'll be his fifth, and he'll be done for the night. I know a disappointing night for him. He fouls out with just six points. His teammates giving him plenty of congratulatory yes. cheers with every point as he continues to, to push it. Now 44 in the game. And that, I think, is, is a career night. Is Maybe. Based on how they're reacting and, and cheering for him, and it looks like he's going to come out with 44 points in the game. Yeah, that's, that's one heck of a night. That's one heck of two nights. Jerry Freeman runs to the other end, swatted away from behind. Connor Jordan recovers for the Cardinals. Hetwer an open look for three. That one won't go. Thrown back up by Belpedio. Got another chance at it that wouldn't fall. Hossfield gets it for Centennial. Down court, D'Agostino all alone. We'll just wait for the foul and head to the line. 105 to go. I'll be Hetworth's third, tenth team foul on the Cardinals. And a lot of fresh bodies coming in wholesale. for Centennial. Yeah, wholesale substitutions. Oh, it's going to be a tough loss for the Cardinals. Uh, they they certainly needed this one to, as you talked, we talked about to stay out of that cellar. But well, and this should uh, allow Centennial to leapfrog yep. over the Cardinals in both the conference and section standings, with just three games remaining on the schedule for Coon Rapids. They've got Rogers coming in here later tonight or later this week. Yep. On Friday. It's going to be on Friday. Yep. Pushed back from a Thursday scheduled contest due to the uh, Snowmageddon. impending snowstorm. We've got a technical foul called against Centennial. I'm not sure what for. Odd. It, and now maybe they're not calling the foul. I'm not sure what they're doing. Foul. Well, and I, I, well, yeah. I don't understand why they would give them the, the technical foul because usually a technical foul, foul is shots plus possession. Right, exactly. I would think that you would let D'Agostino take his second, and then if there were a technical, you would go to the other end for, for that technical. But I, I think uh, Coach Waldvogel won the argument about uh, the substitution being completely legitimate and fair and legal, so that erases that technical. Kenny Jones lays it up and in. Under a minute. Again, Centennial just gonna be happy moving the ball around, taking time off the clock, at least I believe so. Three-pointer from Charlie Augustin won't go. Rebound tipped around. Hatward controls for the Cardinals. Trying to get through some traffic. Kenny Jones for three. It's good. You know, Cardinals respectable with points scored. Obviously, it's above their average, but again, they're just giving up too many points. 
Well, and it all comes down to those threes. 11 in the first half, yep. another seven or eight here in the second. Uh, Dreesen puts up the monster night with 44. Adi gets the steal. Ran down, but will not take the shot at the buzzer instead. Cardinals will just uh, hang their heads, head for the locker room, and back to the drawing board for Coach Schumann and the Cardinals. Yeah, well, you know, and, and again, you talked about it. Rogers coming in here at, uh, at the end of the week and, and uh, another opportunity to see if they can get uh, a home win, which would be their last home game of the season because their last two games are on the road, Elk River and at, at Elk River and at Champlin Park before they would start section playoffs. Yeah, and again, we talked about it from the very beginning. The Cardinals had to have a good start, could not get themselves in a big hole, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, hard to play against a, a team that, that gets a guy like uh, Dreesen as hot as they did yep, in the abso- first half. Oh, absolutely. He came out just knocking down threes uh, again to start right away to start the second half. So, uh, but uh, Jerry Freeman, an outstanding night, unfortunately, uh, is uh, somewhat wasted in a 94 78 yeah. loss. Well, he, I mean, he did it on both ends of the court. Defensively, did it, uh, he did a really nice job, uh, you know, dishing the ball as well as uh, being the leading scorer for the Cardinals. But that is going to do it for this edition of CTN Sports. It's playoffs from here on out. Girls basketball team will start the playoffs next Thursday. Boys basketball will follow uh, the following Saturday. And then it's time for baseball and softball, Howie. It's right around the corner. We will certainly look forward to that uh, as as we sit in the house and watch. As we watch uh, the world turn snowy Snow again. Snow pile week. up here. But that's going to do it for this edition of CTN Sports. Again, the final score is Centennial 94, Coon Rapids 78. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN for the entire crew, including Howie Shapiro. I'm Joe Young. Say goodnight.